hey, it's Manashi from Manashi.org, where it's all about marketing, production, and building a killer portfolio for commercial photography. If you are a wedding, portrait, or other service-based photographer, and you're interested in learning more about commercial photography, or you wanna take on a little or a lot more commercial work, then today's video is just for you. I'm giving you my top six key differences between service-based photography and commercial photography so that you can enter the commercial space equipped with the understanding that you need to approach things differently. One, who are you serving? If you are used to working with in the service-based photography industry, then you know that your clients are real people. So you market to, to them as real people. In commercial photography, your clients are advertising agencies or clients directly. They're still real people, but it's a very different approach in how you're going to market to them. So you wanna understand where your clients are hanging out, what they're talking about, and the language that they use when they're talking. Two, who you are photographing. This may seem obvious, but there are some key differences in how you will approach each different scenario. Clearly with service-based photography, you are being hired by your client to photograph them or somebody close to them and to document their day. Whereas in commercial photography, you are photographing models who have been hired and are being paid as professionals to be in the shoot. With service-based clients, you're being hired to make them look good, make them feel good. You're expected to make them feel comfortable and relaxed and know what to do in front of the camera. In commercial photography with models, the models already know what to do in front of the camera. That's why they're, they're there. They are professionals and they know how to move and they know how to engage. Here's a little pro tip for you. I love working with actors because this brings um, both the best of both worlds. They understand being in front of the camera and they're comfortable in front of the camera and they know how to move naturally, but they have a more authentic, um, real person kind of vibe to them. It's super important that you do a casting before a commercial shoot. Um, at least meeting the models before you do a shoot because you really want to see who they are, see how they engage with the camera, if they're comfortable. Three, how you are pricing. This is probably one of the biggest transitions to wrap your head around. And this is a big roadblock for a lot of photographers who are getting their first few commercial jobs, knowing how to price and present properly. With service-based photography, prices are predetermined with different prices for different packages or hourly rates. With commercial photography, it is a lot more complicated and will change from shoot to shoot depending on a variety of things. So every estimate is going to be look totally different and is going to be structured completely differently. It can be very exciting when you get your first few requests for commercial estimates and it's really tempting to just jump right in and throw out a number. But I really encourage you to take a step back, take a deep breath and Put the prices together in a very methodical way so that you understand the full picture before you dive in because the worst thing is if, to, if you move forward and then later on realize that there are all of these additional costs associated and you end up making nothing or losing. Four, how you are planning. With a wedding or portrait shoot, the planning is very largely determined by the schedule of the day. For a wedding, the schedule is going to be determined by a string of events that need to occur, and so you are going to basically plan around that structure. Within the structure of these types of shoots, there's a lot more flexibility um, for you to move around. For commercial shoots, the planning is everything, and far more of your time is going to be spent planning out every last detail of the shoot than it is actually doing the shoot itself. When a commercial client is involved, you're going to need to think through every detail in advance or hire somebody who can think through those details for you and with you. This will involve detailed communication every step of the way to make sure that you're on the same page as the client and that they're on the same page as you. Every shoot is going to be different in terms of like what the main things that need to happen are. Like some shoots might really depend on a specific location or some shoots might be really planned around a specific person or model. Knowing what the absolute musts are and then everything else falling into place around that. Five, the way you are shooting. With wedding and portrait photography, your aim is to 
create a collection for your client. So you are, you're going to be moving a lot more fluidly through the day and capturing a whole bunch of candid moments and details and things that you see on, in the spur of the moment. With commercial photography, there are different approaches depending on the aim of the shoot, the client, and what the photographer's style and what they're known for. It has become increasingly common for clients to want a library of images or a catalog of images that they can walk away with so that they have a collection that they can work with throughout the year or within a certain time frame so they're not limited to a small number of images. However, historically, the idea is to get maybe five shots in a day. So you're shooting for eight hours for five shots. So that means you're moving a lot more slowly and a lot more consciously. You're making very calculated decisions. You know exactly where you're going to be when, and then you're spending the time that you need in those places to act absolutely nail the shot. This means that there's going to be a lot more time spent setting up shots, setting up lighting, setting up shots, making sure everything is exactly as it needs to be, and then testing those shots, and then checking those shots after you've taken them, and actually deciding on the set, okay, we got the shot, we can move on to the next one. Six, how you are presenting your work. For wedding and portrait photography, it's largely going to be about them putting them in the shoes of the people you have already photographed and seeing if that's how they want their day captured or their family, how you would capture one particular wedding and that your client wants to see that you can capture that whole feeling in the day and they want to see you can do the job from start to finish and that you get all the shots and that you tell the story that they want told. You're going to be pulling together a lot more shots from one body of work. For commercial portfolios, you're going to want to dive, dive deeper into your whole body of work and hone in on a very specific niche. You will want to show a very succinct body of work that shows the story of your brand and that when a client or an advertising agency sees this, they're going to think automatically of you when, they, when a job comes up. If you want to build a commercial photography portfolio, make sure you download my free checklist that walks you through all the steps that you need to take to do it properly. There you have my list of the top six differences between commercial photography and portrait and wedding photography. If you want to dive into commercial photography or learn more about it, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can get all my latest videos. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye -bye.